Hey, what's up guys? Jeff here with Godbolt Exotics. Um, I'm still here with uh, Riley and we've got a very cool species we're gonna talk to you guys about, blacktail crevos. You guys lo know I love dry marcon, so maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit about these. Yeah, so these guys are a, a Central American species uh, that can get pretty big. I mean, this guy right here is about seven and a half feet and uh, there's a few different uh, subspecies of of crebos and and they they vary quite a bit from yellow tails where the colors sort of flip flop to these guys to unicolors and they're the central american relatives of our uh, indigos native to the united states now these guys uh they they do really well in uh in sort of semi tropical environments they like moisture and humidity but they they don't really enjoy crazy amounts of heat like if you can keep these guys into the high 70s low 80s at at most is best most people recommend you know not exposing them to temperatures above 80 but um they they tolerate it they just get a little edgier but they're a ridiculously smart snake they from day one just sort of seem to be more in tune with their environment and and discerning of what's going on um they're just really smart. They know the difference between food pretty much right away and, and anything else. I've never received a bite from these guys out of defense, aggression, anything. They're just super smart, super placid, um, which is kind of ironic considering they have an appetite for literally everything from rodents to birds to snakes to fish to whatever they can find. Yeah, anything they can overpower. Yeah, they will eat it um, if they can fit it in their mouths. You can tell just looking at them and watching their mannerisms, you can just see that brain is just working, trying to figure things out. Mm -hmm. what, what, what is holding me? What am I next to? Mm -hmm. What's that over there? You know, their brain is just con constantly trying to figure out what's going on yeah. and to see what their surroundings are. And man, these guys, like seeing, hold, holding one in my hand, I mean, I can see the respect these guys get. Yeah, they, um, most people's first impression, because they're not common, is it's a very intense snake just by looking at that, the head scalation and sort of those, those black teardrops that, you know, most people's first reaction is, is it venomous and what are you doing holding it? Uh, and then the fact that they're active, they make a little bit of vocalizations from their, their exhalation and their breathing. If people's first impressions is usually a bit like overwhelmed with things that they're not used to seeing from snakes. Right. Um, but they're strong. They're they're really strong. Like they're not a python, but I'm just holding this thing. These are, this is a colubrid, guys, and it is so strong. Yeah. Just feeling like the the muscles in my hands. This snake is different than any other snake I've ever held. They're fast, very fast when they need to be. Um, he's in a six foot cage and he'll clear the length of it and come flying out the door if uh, he thinks there's food coming and I have to, I have to Look at be, that. be pretty prepared. I've never <laughs> seen that. I didn't know that their belly scales yeah. were the same color as, mm -hmm. so I wonder if yellowtail crebos are like that. Like this is a blacktail crebo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they are. They do have that nice transition where you see it in the speckling in the belly. Obviously, the colors are opposite. The only difference I would say is that um, the yellow tails, their yellow is more of like this bright canary rather than this sort of right. gold. And then uh, I think they have a, a wider, more square or flat head. These guys tend to have more of a um, kind of a, a longer sort of it's got a nice curvature I, I was just over looking at a few different um yellow tails at at one of the local guys and and he's got a big old adult male yellow tail and the head is just more angular a little more flat a little bigger just a little, a little bit, bit larger right oh yeah i was holding an eight foot male uh he was a an wild guy male male yeah males actually get bigger in these guys so which is really neat and yellow tails if i'm not mistaken can get bigger than these guys it's not unheard of for big males uh, in captivity at least to reach nine feet. Um, I would imagine that's probably more the exception than the rule. Yeah. I bet you more like seven and a half is average, but they're, they'll do all sorts of stuff, but they will never be aggressive or anything. So what's the recommendation for somebody that's thinking about getting into these? Do it, if you can afford it, because they're not the cheapest snakes. They're not the most regularly available. They are a little tricky to get babies established as they do have a tendency to be frog, lizard, or fish feeders right out of the egg. So those who are breeding them, um, you know, they, they deserve a little bit more compensation for the work they put in and getting these guys. And so you're going to pay a couple hundred bucks for something like this. So if you can afford that, I 
highly recommend it because it is not like any other species of snake you'll keep. They're active, they're intelligent, they watch what I'm doing when I come in here. Um, they're very interactive if you want them to be. And you don't have to go crazy as far as um, having excessive amounts of heat if you're worried about your energy bill or anything. Um, and these guys seem to do better with, you know, kind of an interactive environment. I throw different substrates and leaves and things in there and the more stimulation you give them, um, I don't know, they're just the, the better the demeanor. So um, they make for great display snakes. Yeah, and, they, and one thing I wanted to touch on, these guys seem to do better on a varied diet, right? Yeah. The, you know, like the, the, frog legs that you would, for human consumption mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've seen some guys talk about that as well as, you know, obviously your rodents being the staple, but there's, you can give them. You, you know, can overfeed them. Yeah. Yeah, you can make them fat. You can, you can definitely cause internal issues with, with relation to, you know, eating too many fatty rats. Um, I like to switch it up. As far as my rodents, uh, I'll give them rats and mice. Uh, for a while, I was giving them lots of quail. Um, and, you know, during the breeding season, if I have any stillborn boas or, or babies that just don't make it, um, he gets a little, you know, snake protein in his diet, which is uh, has been found to actually be a pretty big part of their diet out in the wild, uh, um, especially with indigos here in the States, too. So Oh, I bet you they go go crazy over king snakes and About stuff like that. About 50% of their diet is snakes, snakes from what they've been researching. Yeah. Rattlesnakes, oh, yeah. milk snakes, yeah. pretty much any of that stuff. Oh, they love it. I, you know, it's interesting. I don't know if there's anything to it, but... I find when I really pay attention to his diet, his scales are just healthier. Right. Um, these guys just, they sort of, they're thin, they're sort of delicate on the outside of this layer where if it's dry or if they're just not getting the proper nutrition, you see it in their scales right away. Right. So they'll eat fish, tilapia, fresh fishing, you'll catch a fish, skin it and feed them, they'll eat it. Well guys, this has been a real treat. Blacktail Kribos with Riley Jemison. You guys look him up on Facebook and uh, let them know what you think. Um, and until next time, you've been watching Godbold Exotics.